morning, good morning. I wanna to talk to you about how to be a leader without being crazily overwhelmed. So let's be truthful. Uh, I really believe that overwhelm is an epidemic right now. And in fact, if our friends ask us to go out and do something, it feels, um, it feels troublesome. It feels like that's overwhelming too when people are asking us to, to go meet them and have some fun. It's like, ah, uh, there's like another thing for me to do. So I want to talk about this subject because obviously I, I coach entrepreneurs and I show people how to take their passions and take things that they really care about and create a business alongside of that passion and overwhelm is something that just it just kills people's results and let's be truthful it like really kills your passion to want to keep doing it it's like you've got this big mission in the world you want to make a difference you can see how you can make a difference and you can't get yourself out of just almost sometimes even presenting what you do and I want to talk about this because I know that you're up to a big game and I know that it's important for you to impact in a way that you are anointed to impact. And we've got to eliminate this conversation of overwhelm so that you can get ahead and not pull back. So I actually was brainstorming some of the areas that I have, uh, I have been able to eliminate overwhelm. And I can honestly tell you, I have eliminated overwhelm. I don't really remember the last time that I felt overwhelmed. And that's pretty awesome. Like uh, last week I did uh, three events back to back. Um, we just added 10 more events to my calendar this year. And it is not at the expense of my family. It is not at the expense of being a mother. It, um, it's just not at any of those expenses. And so it's kind of cool when you can grow your impact, which just warms your heart more and still be able to you know, be present for the people that you want to be present for. And even most of all, not feel resentful when somebody says, let's go out for dinner or let's go for a, a walk at, you know, the local park or for here, it's like Torrey Pines in San Diego. It's like, you know, there, there was, there was a time in my life. And I actually see this with my clients where when they get asked to do anything, it's like, they're trying to fit in their life inside their schedule. And then you know, something's got to give at that point, because if they do that, then they're not like, you know, exercising or they're not, you get what I'm saying. So I was, I was breaking this down to be as useful as I can for you. I want coffee with Shanda to be a good use of your time, especially when we're talking about time. So um, I wrote these notes down. I was like, you know, what is the number one thing that's really helped me? It has been focusing on the step I'm in. I mean, I think, and I've unpacked this a little bit. So I'll, I'll tell you like how I got there, but you, the goal, the goal with eliminating overwhelm is to actually slow down your thinking. It's not to actually slow down the activities you're in. So my activities keep getting bigger. Um, I was even just thinking this morning when I woke up, I was like, Oh, I got to look at soccer for my son and see when the soccer opens back up because he's in swimming, he's in soccer. And guess who takes them? Me. Even when the coach told me that he didn't want me to come to soccer practice because my son, would, he's little, he would uh, run all over the field and not listen to the coach when I was there, I would still go and hide behind the pole and watch him. So I, I am very engaged. I mean, there are times that I can't be at everything, but I am very engaged. And I don't feel guilty if I, if I miss something because of the fact I am very engaged. And so how do you do that? You manage your mind. You, you got to manage your mind. And so overwhelm starts in a thought. So if you can slow down your thinking, you will be less triggered to go. And overwhelm is a trigger. It's actually a trigger that goes down the rabbit hole and things get worse and you get mean and you get short and it's just a ripple effect of just absolute chaos. If this is resonating with you, I want you to tell me, are you someone who gets overwhelmed? And what is that costing you? You know, what, what, like, is it costing you, you know, uh, a closer relationship with your significant other? Is it costing you being 10 pounds overweight or 50 pounds overweight? Is it costing you your stress level, your adrenal fatigue, your health? What is it costing you? Share that because I think it helps if you comment and share these things, especially if you guys are on Facebook right now, if you help, if it, it, it helps because we get to see that other people are going through this. I know you know logically other people are going through this, but part of unhooking your mind from the chaos 
is to actually give yourself a break and say, okay, I'm not crazy, but there is somebody, there is somebody, and this is where my mind goes, that is doing it better than me. And I'm not trying to compete with them. I'm trying to learn from them. I'm trying, I'm not trying, I never, I never, my, everything starts in the thinking. I never look at somebody rocking it better than me and go like, I suck. I don't, I just, I don't do that. I look at it and I'm like, if that person can do it, so can I. And the way that you lead your thoughts has everything to do with taking your family and your friends off a cliff and being a monster in your life, not showing up for your friends because you don't have time, you know, not showing up for your kids because you're exhausted or you're frustrated or you're frazzled. All of that started in your mind. It all started in your mind. There are people on this planet that have more children than you, have ch more challenging situations and, and are running like bigger lives. And that's always been a sense of relief to me because I know that you don't really want to pull back. You don't really want to. You do if you're tired, but you don't really, underneath it all, you would like to impact on a, on a greater scale. And to do that, you really have to prioritize your thinking. So I'm gonna put a challenge out to you. And that first challenge is if you're uber overwhelmed, then slow down your thinking. Like if you have to tie like a, uh, something on your wrist to remind you uh, to slow down, if you have to put a note on your cell phone that like draw a picture, slow down or slow your thinking and take a picture of it, make it a screensaver on your phone. Uh, right now I'm doing brain exercises, so I have rainbows all around my house. Like, I mean, keep it stupid simple to be able to get better at this. You'll get better very quickly. So, and I manage my mind and I stay in the step I'm in, which means that I'm in coffee with Shanda right now. I'm not thinking about Zach downstairs getting ready for school or doing whatever he's doing. He's probably playing Lego with his dad. That's like the new thing. And so, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm not thinking about what I, what I have to do next. And when I turn off the, the, the camera, I do not do, okay, I don't do that. Because if you live in the sigh, if you live in the sigh, then your whole life becomes a, and you create that. So you have to stop it. Your attitude and your thinking marry together. And so if your attitude is in the sigh, then you're already undermining your power. If your thinking is moving too fast and you're thinking about what I got to do next and, and you're in that, then you have to just slow that down. If you can slow that down and improve your attitude, then the two things will prove to you that you actually can accomplish more. I mean, what I do in a week now is what I used to do in about two years. I actually, I'm going to correct that. What it took me, what I did last week in just income, effort of time and impact of helping people, whether they, whether they purchased from me or not, what I did an in impact income um, and effort last week, when I started my business, I couldn't have done that in three years. I couldn't have done that in three years. It wasn't until, so this is, this should kind of like aha you, not because like what I did, it's about if I can do it, it's possible for you. Because I was the girl going to school that when I had a test or I had to read something, I would shut my bedroom door and I'd be short with my parents because I needed it to be quiet. I needed it to be like silent. I need everybody to leave me alone. Do you know that feeling? Like leave me alone when I'm busy. I needed all of that when I, like there were signs of poor thinking, uh, unstructured thinking when I was a teenager. Because as a teenager, I was already demonstrating thinking patterns that caused me to be overwhelmed. So as an adult, I had to figure this out and you have to figure it out. So you gotta think, if what I did in a week in income, impact, people who didn't buy from me or bought from me, and effort, was something I couldn't have done and accomplished in three years because I was so, so poorly structured in my thinking. So here's what you do. 
focus on only the thing you're working on in the moment. Whenever the other things come in, because it's a pattern, the way you've structured your life, people interrupt you. That's you. You've structured your life like that. Um, you know, uh, things are not handled. Things are urgent. Things are on fire. They all need to be handled right now. Pick your poison. You've got some of these going on in your life. Um, you're handling too much. You're still, uh, you're still cleaning your car. You're still signing paychecks. You're still, you're still pick your poison. You're doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing anymore. And so as you look at focusing on the step you're in, you look at all the poisons of the distractions trying to come in and you got to manage your mind. No more drama. There was a woman that at my last event, sweetheart, I love her. She's actually just joined pace and she's amazing. And she, somebody gave her feedback about something and, or actually didn't give her feedback, just like just mentioned something to her. And she had a, like, it was like a knife going through her heart. And I'm sitting there coaching the two of these ladies. And I'm like, to the person who felt like the knife going through her heart, I was like, she's like, I'm going to be late for an appointment. I'm like, go. Like, like you're allowing, you're allowing your mind to go down a rabbit hole, feel overwhelmed in the moment. And not only overwhelmed in the moment, drama is now coming in and bringing hurt, pain, and all this stuff. And the other person standing there going, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that that would affect you like that. I'm so sorry. And it's like all these little things cause you overwhelm. So I'm not trying to call out those two ladies. I'm actually trying to say I'm sharing a piece of their story, the relevant piece to say, how many times do things happen in your day that you allow yourself to go into some level of drama or chaos or get distracted? You know, I have, I have a friend that just had a, uh, not a horrible breakup. It's actually going through a good breakup, but she's heartbroken. And, you know, I was focused on the step I was in and I was literally getting, getting to swim class to meet my son. And while I was getting to swim class, I, I literally, she was calling me and I was focusing on the step I'm in. I know she's in pain. I know she needs me. However, I'm not available in this second. And so I said, I'll give you a call back. And I gave her a call back like, probably about 30 minutes later when I had space in my calendar to do it. See, some people might say that's wrong, but I was much more available for my friend to help my friend. And if I would have missed a timing or so, then that's just part of life, right? But I was much more available for my friend when I could put it in and not be reactional. You see, you guys, you got to, you got to empower your structure of your thinking in a way that you don't exhaust yourself go into any sort of fatigue. I have found that when things, when I'm not reactional to things and I don't go do, down rabbit holes in my mind, then what happens is I don't lose my emotional bandwidth, which means I don't get overwhelmed. I'll put this into my workload. Something could happen where um, I'm really good at prioritizing. So maybe somebody on my team is like over ambitious and they want every detail on something. I don't get overwhelmed by that. I stop when I have a moment and I teach that person and I communicate because part of the reason why they think they need every detail is because I have not communicated what's relevant here. And so I do that. And then that person forever is changed in the way that they prioritize their thinking. And so my point is, is that you can't let, you can't let overwhelm shrink your business. You can't let overwhelm shrink your business. I know people who are afraid to grow their companies because they either don't want to work with more people because they feel like that will be overwhelming or they don't want to build the structures or they don't want to kill their life. And I'm telling you that is self-centered thinking. I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in look, our souls are filled. The more impact we can make. I'm trying to open up your level of generosity to give. If you've got something that can help other people, you have to train your brain to think differently. So stay in the step you're in, refuse to operate off reactional anything. So create boundaries in your life that you can still get to the other things, but they're going to get, you're going to get to them on your timeline because you are the common denominator. And if you only focus on the step you're in, you're going to skyrocket. So whatever you're doing today, focus on the step you're in. I have cups that literally say focus on the step you're in. If you want us to drop a link for one of our cups, I can put that in the comment section um, and you can actually grab one of our cups. I drink out of it all the time because it reminds me to stay in the step I'm in even today. 
One last thing. Um, I wrote notes on some of the things that were the most valuable for me to not undermine my my efforts on the planet, not undermine my business, not shrink my business because of overwhelm. And another piece that really supports me um, is you have got to schedule in off time. You've got to schedule it in. So my, my stepmom sent me an email this morning and it said it, it was about phone addictions. And she was like, oh my God, this is so real. People are addicted to their phones. And so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go past scheduling in off time and go to technology for a second. Uh, it really helps to turn off your phone. It, it, I, I know it's crazy. I know like we know this, but your nervous system needs a break. There is a lot of time in a day. There's something called earthing pads or grounding pads. You can order them on Amazon. They're super cheap. Um, earthing pads. And I have an earthing pad on my bed. I also have earthing sheets that when the earthing sheets are on, I don't use the earthing pad. When the earthing sheets are not on, I use the earthing pad. And I put my bare feet on it. You've got to have bare skin on it. I put my bare feet on it and I go to sleep. Or I put it up at my back. And I put my son on it as well. And what it does is it actually takes the voltage out of your body. I recommend that you go get it. And the reason why is because chances are you've been told a million times to turn off your phone, get away from technology, and you still find yourself on it. So if you're not going to break some of those habits because you already know it and you don't do it, then find another way to innovate. As an entrepreneur, it's not about looking at a wall and saying, I can't grow my business because I don't like people, or I can't grow my business because, because I'm overwhelmed and I'm not gonna give up my family. Those are all such BS excuses. What you're actually saying is, I'm not choosing to innovate, or probably underneath that, there's a piece of you that feels like you're not smart enough to innovate. And you are, you really are. There's a solution. Now you've got Amazon and Google and somebody has come up with a solution for every single problem that you've had. Go to YouTube and watch my YouTube channel. Go search hardcore business on YouTube and go watch my YouTube channel. And you're going to see a lot of solutions. I create content for there that I don't create anywhere else. And you're going to see a lot of solutions that entrepreneurs have. But forget my YouTube channel. Any problem you have, you can find the answer to. So if your nervous system is tapped, Stop typing in the same thing saying how to reduce stress. I just told you how to reduce stress. Stay in the step you're in. Do it. You do it, that simple thing, and you will reduce stress. But some people won't do it. Such a simple step. And because you have a belief system that doesn't believe it will really work, and you think I'm this talking head on the camera. And it's not. It really works. So grounding pads are another way to alleviate the voltage in your body that is taxing your immune system. These Apple watches scare the shit out of me because you are never giving your body a break. You've got to give your body a break. You can actually test, you can go to Radio Shack or anywhere and you could test the voltage in your body. And you can go find YouTube videos on this as well. Uh, like how to use a grounding pad. There's a woman that does it that's really good if you find her on YouTube. But she shows like where you touch a voltage. And it shows the voltage in your body being at 12, 13, 14, extraordinarily too high. What that means is your immune system is not able to release weight. It means your immune system is having a hard time uh, like curing a chronic cough or something that's going on. And so you need, your immune system is very strong. It can take care of a lot of things, but we're inundating it with toxins all the time. So this woman was t testing the, the voltage, which opened my eyes significantly and and then she touched the grounding pad and the voltage dropped from like 13 to one, 13 to one. So imagine if you could put your feet on, it's a simple pad that you plug into the wall um, and you've got to plug it into a grounding cord into the wall, which it explains that when you get it, but you, you literally put your feet on it. And if, imagine getting a full eight hours sleep where all the voltage is taken out of your body, the healing is extraordinary and your sleep, is like so deep. So I recommend that everybody look at that. So that's it. That's my piece on Coffee with Shanda this morning. How to really be a leader and not allow overwhelm to take you out of the game. And really what I should have labeled this is how to not shrink your business because of overwhelm. All right, you guys, I'll see you tomorrow morning on 7 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. 
Uh, tomorrow morning is Freestyle Fridays, which means that you can ask me anything about your business and I will answer them. So when you get on live tomorrow morning, comment and, and on Facebook, I'm going to say comment and let me know all the details about what you want answered. And I will just rapid fire and hot seat your questions so that you can move your business forward. All right. Have a great day.